welcome to you. My name's Dale and this is Dale's Addiction. Today I'm bringing you my 2024 luxury wish list. So before we kick off with the new items on my list, I am going to let you know what was left on my last update, which I posted mid-year and I'll link that video in the description box below. So I'll link this time last year and then my mid-year update. But the good news is I only had two things remaining on my luxury wish list when I updated it in July. And that was my Louis Vuitton Petite Mal, the ongoing search for the perfect seasonal Petite Mal. Well, that happened in Rome of all places on my holiday. And here she is, the beautiful lilac ostrich Petite Mal. <gasps> Just divine to purchase in Italy on holiday with the VAT refund to um, be honest was a nice little bonus I was not expecting. I'd been looking for pre-loved. I'm actually looking for the Fornicetti Petite Mal that Meredith has from Living Lux with Meredith. But the ones that have been sent to me so far are super expensive and I know they don't keep their value. So I'm going to be super picky about which one of those that... I may or may not consider. If you are aware of a Fornicetti Petite Mal um, in, you know, good condition for a good price, please let me know about it because I am keen. But let's just look at this beauty while we're here because it is just spectacular. Spectacular, spectacular, spectacular. So I guess we'll throw in the Fornicetti Petite Mal right now. The second item that was uh, outstanding on my wish list update was a stone trench coat from Burberry. It's still outstanding, so it's the second item on my wish list for 2024. Um, I've talked about it a lot, but basically, Burberry have stopped making stone as a colour for their trench coats, and I'm hoping they're going to bring it back because that color just works better for my complexion. The honey color just makes me look dead, washed out. My skin looks dull and clammy. And even though I have one, I have worked out how to style it by putting really bright colors that work well with my features close to my face to kind of offset that honey color. It just, yeah, it's, I want to sell it. I want one that works for me that I don't have to try so hard to make work and be, you know, complimentary in my wardrobe. Um, I know that there are other brands that do trench coats and trust me, I'm looking at them all, but I just love the street style vibe of the Burberry trench and I particularly like the one that I used to have which was a Buckingham which you, you could open right out so it had black buttons on it as well, not those kind of tortoise shell light colored buttons i love the contrast of the buttons against the stone so i'm pretty specific about what i want in this space but i am prepared to look beyond burberry i just want a similar silhouette so um again if you have any leads on this one help me out by sending me a dm at instagram which is dale's addiction um Dale's underscore addiction. That's the one. I'll pop it on the screen here. Um, and, you know, if you're not following me on Instagram, maybe consider doing so because you'll see how I integrate all of my pieces into my day-to-day -day wardrobe and looks. Okay, so that takes us to the new bits on the list. Some bits are super new to me and some I've been contemplating for a while. And if you know anything about how the psychology of change works. You tend to be in pre-contemplation for quite a while before you get into contemplation and then consideration, commitment to change and then action. And those bits happen pretty quickly. But the pre-contemplation stage happens for quite a while. And one of the items in my pre-contemplation stage for quite a while moving into contemplation and action is a medium-sized Fendi peekaboo. There's no secret that I love the smile of the peekaboo, that my style is done but undone. There is a peekaboo at the Brisbane Boutique that is white with a blush interior in the medium size that smiles beautifully. But they either won't sell it to me or they won't discount it enough because it is in pretty used and shabby condition. But that is a bag 
that I would buy. I find a lot of the medium sized peekaboos tend to be in really neutral colours which makes sense because people buying those bags are probably not buying them to make a statement, they're probably for work or you know some sensible purpose but I don't want a neutral colour. Um, the white with the blush interior was probably the closest to neutral that I would consider. I want something that is going to have an impact, kind of like my, my Birkin. Um, and I want that big smile that you get from the medium-sized peekaboos. In fact, Autumn Beckman, long-time YouTube fan uh, of Autumn Beckman, she's just bought her dream Fendi peekaboo from Fashion File, and it's in the Celeria leather, and it smiles, and it's all squishy, and it's worn in, and it's perfect. The only thing for me is I would want it in a more vivid colour, but the one that Autumn has picked is perfect for her, so I think that, um, yeah, she's she's reignited the, the spark for that. I have told all my Fendi sales associates that that is what I'm chasing too, that really in terms of, you know, pieces in my Fendi collection, I feel like I've got everything that I want. Um, obviously seasonal pieces will come up from time to time that will, you know, grab me in the heart, but um, I'm certainly making a considered search for a medium-sized Fendi peekaboo. Now this one is a fairly new one. When I was in Paris, um, my friend Nadia, who helped to hook me up with this beauty, asked if I could um, pick her up uh, some perfume from The Harmonist. Now I'd not heard of The Harmonist before. She had tried it and then ran out of time to purchase it. And so I ran around Paris to try and find this boutique, which turns out was not that far from where I was staying but the information on the Facebook page and the website was a bit confusing. Anyway, I ran up there, I bought her perfume and I picked up a few samples myself. And one of the samples that I have started to wear and over Christmas got so many compliments on is Guiding Water. So I, I've used it up, it's gone, and I can't buy it here in Australia, and every website that I go to won't ship it to Australia because it's a fragrance and it's deemed as flammable and there's all these problems with importing fragrances. But I really, really want it. It's fresh and modern and clean and beautiful and feminine. And yeah, I, I don't know how I can get it. I have, um, I've reached out to Rod and asked if he knows a way that I might be able to get it. If you know a way I might be able to get it, it's called, the brand is The Harmonist and the perfume scent is Guiding Water. Please let me know because now I'm, you know, almost obsessively hunting for that. Now, you guys have got a lot to answer for, my friends here. Um, <laughs> Eileen sent me through a few links to Roger Vivia last night, and it turns out that they have re-released their Violet Bell Vivia Trompet Pumps in a patent colour. Now, I have the leather. I have these ones, but to be fair, I'm not going to put them up close because they're close to the end of their natural life. I wear them a lot, and patent is much harder wearing than these softer leather ones. I do try to find Roger Vivia shoes on sale because they will tend to go on sale on some of the platforms, and they are a significant investment. But they're on the list because um, as soon as there's a discount code or something on matches or Louisa Via Roma, I'm getting them. Still in the shoe department, I am chasing some silver sandals. It has been very hard to find silver sandals. Perhaps it's because you guys in the Northern Hemisphere are still in your winter months. So I'm hoping that during the spring summer releases that we start to see some silver and metallic sandals come out. When I say sandals, I'm not looking for evening shoes. I'm not looking for those little flat, strappy, super uncomfortable sandals. I'm looking for like an espadrille type sandal or a kind of a platform type sandal with a nice, you know, yummy silver leather um, strapping on it. Something that you could wear all day. Um, maybe a wedge even, but something that is, you know, relatively sensible height to go with my new silver bags. Not that I tend to match my shoes and bags very much, but I just think metallic shoes are really hard to come by. I tend to find them more in the cheap shoe shops. Um, 
and nothing wrong with that but I'd like a pair that are more elevated so yeah I'm on the hunt for those so again if you see anything feel free to let me know in the DMs and I'm gonna throw it out there if there's an opportunity for me to add to my beautiful stack of bracelets then perhaps I would like to add a rose gold bracelet um, and perhaps that might be Cartier who knows but um, it's not something that I'm desperate for if I see opportunities I can try things on and see if that is something that you know makes it into my collection additionally I'd probably like to add another piercing perhaps to this ear I'm thinking perhaps a little tragus um, piercing here. Um, I love the Maria Tash jewellery and curated ears. Um, it really fits with my personal style. Um, I don't like to change my earrings out very often except for like a statement earring in the front piercing and yeah I just enjoy having beautiful fine jewellery pieces that you know will last the distance um, now that we have a boutique here in Australia although they don't do rose gold which is weird. Um, you know perhaps I can do that or given that they're my luxury items complete perhaps I might go again in Paris so I have been watching a lot of YouTube and I have been thinking about um, what travel might look like for me this year not just me um, and my husband as well and one of the things that I am considering doing is perhaps an end of year European trip to kind of take in the non Grinchy Christmas vibes and solve my Grinchdom blues by going to see all the beautiful lights and bits and pieces inspired by the gorgeous Leslie Adina's Christmas vlogs and Hannah from So Much Design with Hannah in London. Um, yeah, at the moment they're really speaking to me and I thought, well, my birthday is at the end of November so I could tie it in with a birthday trip, see all the festive bits and pieces um and then you know still be home for christmas because i don't want to be overseas at christmas time just because it looks miserable and cold <laughs> and if you're not with family and you're in a hotel like it's not you know and friends it's just, yeah it doesn't have the same vibe so i think being able to see all the pre christmas celebration would be nice so I'm thinking, I'm in pre-contemplation mode about that, but I've done a fair bit of research, I have to say. No bookings as yet. In other travel news, I'd like to do more domestic trips. So I'm looking at long weekends. So, you know, taking a day and going Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or Saturday, Sunday, Monday, or Friday night. Um, and just being able to pop around and see places and see people that I didn't really do a lot of that last year. And I tend not to. And um yeah i feel like that's something i want to do more of so um you know potentially like little winery escapes and city escapes and things like that which is relatively easy to do from where i live so i just need to plan them and make them happen yes that's what i need to do planning not a strong point of mine and then the final thing um it's not really a wish list thing but it's more of an intention that i want to set is I just want to wear more of my bags. Um, I have no reason not to wear them. I think I've just gotten into a bit of a funk with carrying like one big work bag. Um, and I totally understand how people can get into that because it's practical. But I buy these bags to wear and enjoy and I really want to challenge myself to do that. I don't have to lug a laptop around with me and so I should take advantage of that and just take a handbag with my essentials. It's really all I need. So I am going to work on either transitioning to a double bagging situation where I take my big, my big work bag and then another bag and then I feel a bit more secure in the fact that I have everything that I want with me to just carrying one bag and seeing how that goes and I think that that will give me a real sense of um, you know my collection and how much I enjoy wearing things I think I'll get a lot more value out of my collection and I'll also work out what doesn't work and perhaps move it on and as I said in my last year's wishlist video using the liquidity in my collection to continue to fund it uh, is something that I'm definitely keen to do because I can't take them with me can I so that's everything um pretty concise I think pretty realistic um based on last year 
I mean, anything could happen because I had a hell of a time in 2023. Maybe, you know, I'm hoping to kind of peter that down a bit this year. <laughs> But yeah, certainly I think by using the things that I have and really leaning into them and styling them and enjoying them that I will, um, you know, I will be distracted enough from the shopping, maybe. <laughs> What's on your wish list? I would love to know. What do you think of the items that are on mine? And can you help me with any of them? You guys have been the most spectacular global sourcing team for me on this channel. I've picked up so many things based on your insights your hot tips your you know sending me messages in instagram i can you know i can name a bunch of things that i have because of you and so i find if i put out the wish list you can definitely find a way to help me if you remember i will keep you updated on how we go against this wish list and i look forward to seeing you in my next video typically a wednesday or a sunday if you've liked this one please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing look forward to seeing you in the next one until then ciao